What up? How are you guys doing right now? So, you haven't seen me playing Tarkov for a while, probably. Haven't really streamed it in like a month. I personally played it like two weeks ago, and then I logged in now and I was like, you know what? I'll just toss on the hat and make a video that kind of covers my opinions about Tarkov and playing this wipe, getting Kappa, and uh, do a tour of my whole inventory and shit. So, first we'll probably start it off with the inventory tour and just go over all the shit that I have right now. Haven't been on since, uh, looks like the 19th was the last time I played, and it's the 2nd of, uh, November right now, so about two weeks ago. Missed out on all my insurance stuff. Who cares about whatever I missed, I don't even remember. Literally nothing. So, uh, yeah. Basically, let's probably cruise through the hideout first. I'll maybe explain a couple things. And, uh, and then, yeah, I've got some bullet points and just kind of general stuff I want to talk about with Tarkov. Like, lost power, lost everything. It's like, okay, we got some Bitcoin here. We'll grab my booze. We'll do a full tally on the inventory, too. We'll see We'll see what the whole value is. I mean, I stopped playing a while ago. I really stopped playing after I got the cap. I was just like, there's just nothing to do in the game, so. All right, so that's more or less it. I've had the full hideout, and I've had the 50, 50 video card Bitcoin shit running since, like, what, day 10 or whatever, the fastest you could possibly do it. Um, so let's check the overall account stats page. Apparently it's worth 296 million. Let's see what a Bitcoin's worth right now. Bitcoin's are worth 197k right now. Holy moly. So yeah, we basically finished around 300 million. I was joking at the start of this wipe. I was like, it'll be my first time playing the game on like a full wipe other than, you know, last time I joined it like three quarters through a wipe and played uh, Savage's account. And just mess around on that until because I didn't want to waste time on a brand new one. But uh, I was joking I'd be a Tarkov billionaire, and uh, I can easily say that if they hadn't done the economy changes that they did, where they nerfed all the pricing, I'd have easily been a billionaire already. But uh, really, what stopped me from being a billionaire is just uh, I stopped playing the game, um, and I'm gonna cover why that is. You can obviously see I have 1,600 raids. Uh, I really hate that I have a high kill-death ratio and a high survival rate. You gotta realize at the start of this wipe that a lot of the way that I was leveling strength uh, was me suiciding and grenading myself. You can't see it in here that... I wish they showed suicides because, yeah, my survival rate's probably really about 90-something percent. I mean, my most raids I survived in rows 24, to give you an idea. I think I did it on stream as well when I was crushing Factory, being the raid boss of Factory, but... The game's kind of gimmicky in the way that you uh, earn everything, and so I'll, I'll go through everything in it. And yeah, 800 hours online, but who knows how much that really is because a lot of time I was just AFK, obviously with Corona and shit, I work from home, so it was easy to just sit online and collect Bitcoin and all the other shit in Tarkov, all their little cell phone gimmicks. But I have a ton of kills. I killed a ton of PMCs. I mean, you guys saw me play it a bunch on stream. I posted up a bunch of videos. We'll, uh, we'll go over the skills real quick. So I got Elite Endurance, my strength hit 30, but you gotta realize that they patched strength to make it level super fast now. And so I, I legitimately at the start of the wipe throwing only grenades, literally throwing millions and tens and tens and hundreds of millions of dollars in this game away with grenades and had 19 strength. Then they released that patch and I played for a couple days and I got 30 strength. I could easily get like two, two levels of strength a day playing after work now. Like you could get max strength in 30 days easy. Uh, vitality's pretty high, health's pretty high just because that other shit. Attention is literally a useless skill because it's broken and I'll cover this at the end of the video, just more or less my my opinion on skills that are in the game like this that don't do anything, but uh, assault rifle recoil never really got that high, but yeah, did snipers for the quests, got recoil control itself to 27. Aim drills, this is the shit that basically got patched into the game around the strength time. Uh, same with what? prone movement and surgery, so I got surgery 6, so you can get an idea of how much I played into the update from when they added aim drills, surgery, prone movement. I, I basically stopped playing as soon as the Kappa, and then after the Kappa I played a tiny bit once this new update came out with uh, the underground on reserve and the new customs update, and that's it. That's it. Otherwise, uh, all my quests are done. I don't kill Killa at all. I don't do any of these other quests unless they're part of uh, the key or part of the Kappa, which maybe next wipe they will be, but I don't even know if I'm gonna play the next wipe. Never even got the compass, haven't even logged in, so... I found all the key cards in Raid, I have my red found in Raid, never even took it into Labs, because Labs is unplayable garbage, but... 
Let's uh, let's go over kind of what I've done, my Sim City, so to speak, with the inventory. And so, if you play Tarkov, you might like be about to shit yourself when I show you everything that I have. You probably already were like, wait a second, 300 million stash value. What the fuck is going on, Artemis? Correct, you are. Uh, so I've been collecting Bitcoin in the game ever since the start of the wipe. Uh, I basically bought all the video cards day one for like 80k because making money in the game is such a joke. And uh, I've just been letting it shit out Bitcoin. And then obviously I trade Bitcoin for weapons cases and stuff. Other than that, these are things I collect, LEDX, until I don't have any LEDX obviously right now because, you know, sold them. My T2 trash, this is just something that I, that I like to just toss all my junk and get back into raid and just start collecting more crap, but this is more or less the crap that I look for in raid and then sell it all off in bulk. My miscellaneous box is just for having money in, um, basically overflow meds, this is just for selling, this is really for selling and supplying my greens, this is just for raid materials, my salevas, all my different meds. Uh, various meds, these are all, all these things are really not worth much. This is for mass leveling metabolism at the start of the wipe. Crackers, slickers, mayo, and water is like the best shit you can get. These are just my favorite rigs I like. I basically like the belt as my looting rig. Um, so yeah, metabolism junk. Everything's labeled, everything's color coded. Um, let's see what else we got now. Uh, this is just a grenade case of shit that I sell and then grenades that I throw. Oh yeah, they gave us like a that's the that's the reason I logged in. They gave us a grenade case and like five million bucks, and so that's the last time I've played. Um, but let's move on. So yeah, I really like the gazelle because the gazelle is 120k. So you can just literally see this is just the the last of the shit that I left in my inventory. I was fucking around with a pure meta HK that I think they just recently nerfed. I swear it had higher ergo before, but maybe it didn't. Uh, everything that I use is meta, so my exotic AK ammo, my 995, and then my BP, so the various guns that I use. I keep a box for headphones. This box is basically just where I toss in all sorts of random weapon parts so I can customize shit or whatever I find, you know, that's just like a weapons part box. And then uh, over here I got my Red Rebel that I literally never use in my paracord because I don't play the maps that use that. Uh, just various keys and stuff that I've collected that don't really matter. Uh, my sick case has uh, all the shoreline keys. Basically, I've just taken this out because I was taking it elsewhere, but including the sanitar key as well. I don't need that key. I think I was helping out a friend on another map. So that's the sick case. Then the reserve case. I've literally found in raid almost all the keys. So uh, that's basically that. And then I like to stack the backpacks like this. So this is just all tri zips and anything that's a tri zip or a beta. And then these are pilgrims and attack twos, you know, big fat couch backpacks. And then these are, this is just, this is my, my hole of couches. It's just, look at how deep this, look at how fucking deep this bag is right now. I'm gonna crash the game with how many of these I've fucking collected. So, and I run around in them too. It's not like this is all shit that I just don't use. I mean, you guys see me play. So these are all just like mid-tier helmets and shit that I toss on. My favorite run in the game is basically the gazelle and some random junker helmet. I'll cover exactly why I don't like any of the helmets in the game as well, of course. So this is my go-to, the 6B47s. Some of this helmet with the steel, the ricochet, and then Ulax if I'm feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, trickier, but otherwise, uh, these are the guns I like to rock. So these are my AK-74Ns. You can see they they have to literally cash themselves in because I haven't looked at this shit in so long. But this is my meta AK that I normally use right here. So the AK-74N PDP rock this shit thing with uh, BS or Iglenik tears people to pieces. I personally really like it with the hammer right now or the Bravo. Doesn't matter. Either of these two are, are my go-to's now in the game. Uh, they're my favorite scopes. It just makes the most sense. And then like if I'm close quarters or I throw a hammer on this thing too, these are my uh, Meta M4s. So that's 79 Ergo, 3493. Uh, so these are nasty as well, the jailbreak. So I mean, you're just spraying like crazy. Uh, and then I mean my HKs, so I think I was using them. But basically I normally keep all my gun cases stacked like this. It just makes it easy when you go and play with your friends to like grab loadouts you don't feel like you're building stuff and then with the way that their timers work in the game and for absolutely no reason at all other than like a cell phone game to cause you to log in every three hours to buy stuff it's just obnoxious what an obnoxious system so they force you to like pre-assemble your guns so that's the whole reason for all the bitcoin farms etc and getting lead x and things like that it's because look at how many thick cases i have and, and how many weapons cases i could have i mean i can go and do runs 
I can go do runs all night with my friends and never once have to assemble anything because I got gazelles. I got gazelles for days and I got guns to swap out. Oh yeah, and these are red tube ones too as well. Totally forgot I've got uh, red tubes in these. I, I want to say those red tubes are like 100k. Here, I'll show you something that's fucking annoying right now. The fact that you have to click through a second menu to get to filter by item. As if that's not the first fucking thing I'm trying to do. Ooh, prices are crashing right now since I last played. This is my S tier case. This is just like, you know, if you feel like getting cheated in the game, you bring out your Killa or your Defender or your Slick. Exfil airframes. You know, th this is your... You're talking about chops protection, the head, eyes, etc. Which does nothing because of how prevalent meta ammo is in the game. But if you're planning on protecting your dick and chest, you know, the killer armor, and if you're planning on, you know, getting shot in the dick, or head eyes, then wear the slick. Uh, I think all the prices are crazy for him at this point. And then this is my my last case I'm going to show you guys. This is my, my weapon ammo mag, so you guessed it, it's just full of different ammo. Full of different stuff. This is half M61, half M62, and then, I mean, these are both M62 cases. Stacked stuff, BP ammo for the Val. Val's not met anymore. I don't use any of this SMG shit. And then these are just easy stock mags, you know. Miscellaneous, got nothing in it. More more random SMG shit. SA58 if you're running the Juice Cannon. Hunters. Mags for the M4s and HKs. My AKM mags. My AK74N mags. Val mags. And then this is just mainly overflow PvP guns. So this is like my BP my BP uh, AK and of course I'll just throw a hammer on this thing as well two taps to the chest in tier 5 which I, I don't even know why anything's allowed to two tap the chest tier 5 with with how shit the desync is in this game imagine also feeling like you're playing like insta give mode in quake 3 arena that's more or less what all these guns do all the guns I've shown you you can strafe left and right like COD and full auto and just kill everyone in two hits and whoever wins on the server wins because it's two two hits to the chest you die so it's kind of silly this is where I put guns that I'm like you know about to assemble you know I put random parts and whatever else overflows just same idea SA58s this is the old juice cannon right here uh, M1A snipers these are just you know thermal snipers just like my other box of them don't really use them very much they're like a mill a piece my Val Gamer, but the Val obviously got nerfed, so not nearly as cool as stats anymore. Grenade launchers, really haven't played enough. Basically, I'd say, yeah, the last time I really heavily played Tarkov was uh, when the grenade launcher got added. I was just like, I don't like this direction of the game. So, two grenade launchers stolen from people, I think those videos are on YouTube. And then these are Reapers that I've had, so I basically have like 20 Reaper thermals right now if I really wanted to go and burn through them, and then night visions that I've stolen from people. Uh, and that is the full inventory tour. That is 296 million value packed in here. You got to realize I have 100 million cash and liquid Bitcoin. Each of these is about 200,000 right now. So you could say I've been playing the economy game for fun. I mean, no surprises, you guys. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about Tarkov mechanically uh, and not just about me collecting stuff like a fucking crazy person. Uh, obviously I really like uh, economy based games and looting and the PvP aspect of games isn't even really that important to me in the grand scheme of things so from this point forward you guys this will be my opinion on Tarkov now uh, you might be a Tarkov developer and you'll be like Art's a developer I'm kind of curious to hear his opinion so some of the shit you guys already know probably and some of it might be a little bit more eye-opening but uh I think for the most part for a game that's been in development you know six seven years now Tarkov's not in a bad place so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is probably the biggest turnoff and why even though I've amassed all this stuff I can't bring myself to play it it really annoys me and that is the absolutely horrendous frame rate of Tarkov um it's 2020 now about to be 2021 and uh, the game has visual stimulus overload. It satisfies so many nice feelings, like with the UI, with uh, inventory management, with all the various items, the, the depth of gameplay with all the different item management. It's total item manager's paradise. I mean, we love it. But then I'm running around in game and there's so much shit on my screen and the occlusion sucks so much with, with I believe, the Unity engine right now. And, uh, I have a very, very expensive custom-built $3,000 computer with a RTX 2080 Super in it. Uh, I have a super nice monitor, 2560 by 1440 resolution, 
144 Hertz and uh, my graphics settings right here uh, you can see everything's more or less disabled in your game and I can't get any stable frame rate even close to 120 I can't get 150 and it's almost 2021 it's just unplayable garbage and it, I, it sucks to say but frame rate is so important in an FPS game and the game just runs like dog shit and it runs like such dog shit that if you play games a lot and your eyes are calibrated to your monitor, variable dips from 110 down to 60, back to 110 down to 60, it's mentally fucking fatiguing when you play the game like that. And so I found myself only really enjoying maps like Labs, which is infested with cheaters and unplayable trash, and Factory, which is boring because it got nerfed and there's no more scabs and it's unplayable trash now. I felt like the game was just backing me into a corner, not only of maps that I could get viable frame rate to enjoy Tarkov, but also uh, have enjoyable gameplay. And I feel like that was stripped from me too. Uh, because I, th I think one of the strongest aspects of Tarkov is its PvE. The PvP in the game is seriously like a 3 out of 10. It's some of the worst PvP I've ever had in any game. The rush is great, but what I'm referring to when I say it's some of the worst PvP I've ever seen is the desync. It's when you look at two different players go and have a shootout against each other, fucking anything goes in this game. That's why you can never really like take it personally when you die, because who knows what the other guy on the other scene, or, or on the other screen even saw. It's it's not even fair. So he might have been having horrid frame rate, and then you just lag teleports, ultra power slided around a corner, and then pulled the most random headshot in the world. So you're sitting here battling like janky ass FPS with desync and stuff. It's just not a scenario for a competitive environment. That's why the PvE is really fun and I like when I've killed all the players and I get to go and fuck with Rashala or Glucar or any of the major bosses on the map. I think that's the most enjoyable thing to me. It reminds me of Albion. It's like a hell rift except there's players on the map and so um, yeah, let's move on away from the shitty shitty shit just fucking shit FPS that makes me not even want to play the game because the frame rate's so fucking bad and uh, I know I know everyone else who plays Tarkov agrees and I think that you guys are absolutely insane as devs to not uh, just give settings that at least just put the FPS into a constant 120 like nobody wants nobody wants to see all this visual clutter and trash they just want solid frame rate it'd be so much more fun to actually go looting and running around in the game if the if the frame rate wasn't so jank so I know, I know it's a, a known thing, but I really have to beat that to death for a couple minutes because it's it's that fucking bad that I don't want to play from it. It's my number one problem with the game that the frame rate's so shit. So, next up uh, is audio issues. Um, sometimes I go deaf from how loud things are, and then other stuff is like silent. Like you can be literally next to someone, they don't make any noise. They'll run up a metal staircase literally right next to you and just appear next to you, and it's just like, oh yeah, that's why this isn't a competitive game. So audio is fucking bizarre. Once again, the pillars of support in this game are the looting and the inventory management and the PvE and the questing. You guys don't have any repeatable events and activities, but I'm sure with enough time you guys will add more retention-based gameplay because I'm sure your player retention sucks dick. Uh, which isn't just because of repeatable activities and things like that, it's also just a very harsh ecosystem, but Tarkov's badass because of that. I enjoy the difficult learning curve and I know that people who love these types of games love it too. I mean, I used to make games like this, now I make other types of games, but the economy doesn't change. It doesn't matter what kind of game you're playing, the incentives remain the same. If you're interested in collecting things, you're interested in collecting things. The, battle, the battlefield behind you doesn't matter at all. Um, so, audio issues are kind of annoying and jank, but Steam Audio has recently been introduced and we'll see if that updates over time. I'm sure that they've earned enough money now that they've made around 150 million bucks that they can afford an audio engineer for like 150k a year to revamp the game and fix a lot of stuff. Hey, that's great. Uh, it's good. Um, next up is uh, UI issues and gripes with a lot of the tiny useless menus. Like why would the first thing I want to do when I go and try and search this is run down a menu of fucking 87 things with search being at the very bottom and then another little tiny menu for filter by item. Yeah, fucking right, dude. I'm, I'm either double clicking the item to inspect it or I'm literally searching and then other, other actions are available. But all these little tiny buttons are really annoying. Uh, I don't, I don't think that the game should turn into like something with like a UI like a console game. That's fucking obnoxious too. But some of these menus, it's like, okay, you guys need to, need to sort a little bit better. You have a million little random things, but that's like, who, 
Who's clicking tag a lot? Who's clicking reset tag a lot? What are the odds people are clicking discard? You can hide all these things. People want to know what the fuck the price of the item is. That's like the first fucking thing. And then, oh, like, it's just a, the user experience is kind of jank. It's kind of weird. Uh, but of course everyone gets around it because the rest of the gameplay, the rest of the pillars of support are strong. So, uh, next up, it's the problem with all games and until there's like a Windows solution, but the cheating, and I don't think that this is necessarily the fault of the team, I understand how difficult it is to deal with the cheating. Uh, so I'm not really going to touch too much on it. The art team and the guys who are balancing guns and loot and all that, they don't, it's not their job to do anti-cheat. So, uh... It does make it tough that there are such high level accounts and, and regular level ones zone into labs because labs can just be walked into at level one for some reason and doesn't have anything to do with prerequisites with quests. So cheaters just wander into maps with veterans immediately. It's not even the private cheating scene, it's the paid cheating money selling scene that like they don't have to jump through any hoops. Um, and on top of that they can speed hack there's no server-side detection of doors being locked or unlocked. There's no scripted events where if the door isn't unlocked with a key, the loot doesn't spawn. Literally, cheaters can go over patch day and say, I have a red key card, and walk into the red key card room. It completely invalidates your legitimate user base that's trying to enjoy the game from, from enjoying the game because the cheaters... Inst it's like your game is designed as a theme park for cheaters to profit in. Uh, you build the cage that your players live in, so that's where they live. So don't be surprised if they turn into products of their environment. And right now, the incentive to cheat is so fucking high because you get so many perks cheating, and it's unfortunate because, you know, the risk and reward, the excitement of the game, but Jesus Christ, can you please put your fucking doors on the server side and at least, at least make sure that you have an enable event associated with the unlocking of the door so the loot doesn't even spawn behind the door until that actually happens. The fact that your attention skill doesn't even do anything in the game because all the loot is constantly broadcast from the fucking server to the client at all times. It's like cheaters just run up and grab all your most expensive items on the map and then avoid you and hide. They can they can client-side spoof that they have more strength than you can even get. They can jump like Michael Jordan. They can be dead silent because Max and Covert movement. Why are all these abilities not checked on the server side? Like, fuck, you don't have to, you don't have to actually check in real time constantly every packet saying, are you actually 32 strength? Are you 32 strength? Just fucking check it at the start and then say they're 32 strength. That's it. And at the end, calc, calc the possible difference and then, you know, with some leniency. But. Otherwise, like, Jesus Christ, how can you go in as a level one into labs and super jump like Michael Jordan and think that that's acceptable in a game with full drop? It's, it's the risk-reward scenario. It's totally off. But that's all I'll cover about cheating. There's just a lot of stuff that needs to be done. And if Tarkov just goes to Xbox or some sort of console, then none of these will be issues because it's a closed-loop system. So woes of the PC world, and that's just how it goes. So it's not their fault, really. It's the anti-cheat team's fault. And uh, it's also probably the fault of just being on an engine at this point that probably doesn't support a lot of bells and whistles that are modern that like Unreal does for anti-cheat stuff and even then it's a cat and mouse game. I'm sure they're doing a great job. I'd much rather them fix the fucking frame rate in the game before they deal with the cheating problem. That's for fucking real. I can get by with getting cheated 33% of the time in your game. Patch day I can go run around and seriously never get shot in the fucking head. Three days later I go around Everyone hits me in the head eyes constantly as if it's like just a game of fucking pros. Not even that big of a deal if I could just get a constant frame rate. Up next, desync and worthless armor in fights. I kind of already covered it when I showed you the armor that I fuck with in the game. I'm either like wearing nothing or I'm in a tier 5 gazelle or I'm maybe in a killer or a slick rick. That's it. And because of the desync and how like useless the armor is in the game, most of the time, it, it really doesn't matter. Armor actually acts more like scav protection than anything else. So it's like, you're running around in paper, but if scavs shoot you, you might be wearing metal enough to survive. And sometimes, you know, scav scavs shouldn't even be allowed to shoot you in the head eyes. Like, it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense in a game like this. Or if, or if they can, it seriously needs to be like a one in a thousand occurrence when they choose to engage and shoot. It's, it's not enjoyable. It's not, it's not doing anything. The prevalence of high-end ammo in the game totally invalidates all face masks and 
and almost everything armor related. So you just end up wearing a body armor and no helmet, or you wear something that's that's high ricochet helmet. That's the meta, that's how it's gonna go. So the desync means that because you die in two shots, plus desync, plus bad frame rate, it's literally a dice roll where you both can almost pre-fire corners in this game, or one guy can see the other guy and start shooting him, and the other guy can be like, holy shit, he's shooting me, and turn and kill that guy. Because desync is so fucking bizarre, that's why I just say it's a fucking dice roll every fight, and the game is literally a predatory ambush game. Whoever ambushes first should technically win. If you try and play it straight up fights like Counter-Strike, yeah, it's, it's pretty awful. And you are playing an MMO where you might be fighting a guy that has max recoil and max assault rifles, or a guy that's just cheating those two stats and nothing else and has zero recoil and zero... You, you get where I'm going. It's, it's unfair right now to be playing Super Warriors sometimes. Okay, let's move on besides desync and how worthless armor is. Everybody knows how worthless armor is. But the bad armor combined with desync creates some really bad fighting scenarios. Uh, the next up, that's it's a retention issue, it's the lack of activities once the cap is attained. Now, uh, you know, modern games these days, you have to have strong retention, you have to have reasons to log in each day. Obviously, they've gone down the player retention route of the hideout, they've got a reason to log in with their water filter, their Bitcoin, those are all reasons to come and check back on the game every couple hours and say, hey, I'm still here, hey, I'm still here. Uh, but you need activities in game. You need you need like a quest guy that's gonna dish out some quests, guys. Like, come on, it's it's 2021. Just grab any of WoW's quest models and any of their daily quest models. Like, I don't give a fuck if you even send me on a repeatable quest from a quest log that I've already done. Like, fuck it, doesn't matter. Just give me something that I can go and do besides like I guess we'll go look for Ledex. I guess we'll go look for the red key card. Those are byproducts of activities that I should be doing on the map. I shouldn't just be looking for the red keycard. I should be doing other activities, getting a reward like I'm a mercenary, and getting loot at the same time. That's a more enjoyable experience. Create those stepping stones to activities so that I actually have content and things to do each day. As soon as my friends run out of activities or stuff that I can't really help them with, I literally feel like I'm running around the map like a solo Rishala guard, where I'm like annoying bastard with an AK and a T5 armor gazelle, and it's like, if you kill me, you probably shredded all my gear and I'm not really worth that much, but I'm fucking dangerous as shit. And I have no objectives, so I'm just like a random wrecking ball. It creates unknown gameplay for all the other players on the map, and it creates random play patterns. If you incentivize players with where, where they should be going on the map, you'll create more... more established, like, trade routes, so to speak, and gameplay associated with it. You have a lot of good treasure chest gameplay, where there's a treasure chest on the map, you have... You have a boss as well. I love the bosses. I think the bosses are great. You know, obviously when I was working on Shattered Skies back in the day, I was looking forward to the, the Overlord Alien, but you know, the company went in a different direction while I was there, and you know, ultimately I of course left uh, years ago now. But uh, Tarkov is a really unique, cool game, and uh, you know, it's come so far, but it's still got so far to go. Um, so that covers the lack of activities since the capital is contained, and then uh, up, up next uh, as my last gripe, and then I'll go to things I love about the game is that the skills are really annoying to level in most cases and a lot of them feel super grindy and oftentimes they don't work like attention or they provide such a mundane thing or they level in such a bizarre way or uh, they're, they're lacking like a resting system that lets you spend money like I want to go and pay a guy to I want to pay a personal trainer to level up one of my skills like strength while I'm offline I want to pay him $500,000 an hour in game while I'm offline and he's gonna translate my byproduct, my 300 million dollars that I have, that's fucking worthless, give me a sink, give me an incentive to keep running and getting loot and farming and let me level my account right now. You're completely wasting all the money that I get. Completely wasting it, Nikita. I know you're gonna watch this. Someone's gonna link this shit to you. So, uh, there's a lot of things that can be done right now. You just need proper sinks right now because uh, everyone's ballooning in your economy and you just need proper sinks that incentivize it. So. Let me level skills, let me level up perks with my excess money while I'm offline. Let me hire a personal medical guy and a personal trainer. You can add them as other sinks in the hideout. You know, easy stuff. I mean, you guys hideout's just a fucking UI. You don't even have anything other than like a couple meshes in there. So, uh, 
I mean, should should be pretty simple overall. I don't know what the state of you guys UI is and how easy it is to fuck with this beast at this point. But you got so much sick stuff. It's just like, man, you guys need to streamline the skill system a little bit more and and look up Darkfall and look up their rested system where you could spend money in game to level up skills so that you could progress while you're offline. You have a lot of great cell phone style offline progression and it can only get better. So that's all the things I hate. So now I'm gonna say some nice things. So I love that you've stuck to your vision of your game and you've not swayed despite the community saying all sorts of whack shit over the years. I've, I've logged in and played it every now and then. I, I A lot of the stuff you guys have actually done it's bizarre, but I almost feel like you've stolen my ideas of stuff that I was planning back in the day, but it's just ultimately natural progression, great minds think alike, so uh, I love what you guys have really done. I had a lot of fun sinking hours into it and kind of catching up to your current patch, considering the last time I really played was like three four years ago, and I only played for like a week or two and poked around. It was real jank back then. So, uh, I, I love that you guys have stayed true, and in some cases you guys have stayed so true that I think you've pissed off your community, but that's okay sometimes because the player base, the fan base, really doesn't know shit a lot of times, and uh, you know better than anyone else, and you're living it and making it, so uh, I think that you've come this far, why, why would you bend the knee now? I think stick true to that, but I think there's a couple whack things in the game like grenade launchers and stuff like that. So really that just comes down to economy balance, the prevalence of power items and you know the pyramid of power with the space needle on top. It's all about the pyramid of power with the space needle and the space needle needs to be twice as big as the ultimate pyramid. Um, so uh, I love the PvE in the game, I love all the bosses, I love that now the bosses are apparently going to have unique audio so that you can know that they're there. They're great dinner bell. It's like ding ding ding. Dinner's here and uh, it's like there's blood in the water and there's a boss that has a lot of loot that could be guarding potential loot and then you start shooting at the boss and it draws other people over and it's just a dinner bell on the map. Really really cool gameplay and even though the the AI aimbots you every now and then they see through bushes way too way 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 too well. But otherwise, uh, I love I love the PV in the game, and uh, that's probably the most enjoyable thing for me because the PVP is often so jank. But some of the most fun times has been me just fighting raiders with my friends, and sometimes having a player show up. Um, my next my next thing is uh, I really wish that Labs was playable. It's a cool map. It's got a lot of money on it, but it's not incorporated into your ecosystem properly because level ones can just walk into it. There's there's no incentives to do other quests or progress through your trees or do anything in the game Because labs is like hey, you know, you got a labs carp welcome Welcome my friend and then they just get to go aim about the whole map and just make all your players not want to play the game So if you're gonna have end game raid tier content at least make it incentive based where you actually have to unlock it and feel like you've made progression and feel like someone who does get banned on that map actually lost something because you need to like, you know, get halfway through the kappa, etc. And the people who say, well, you know, that's not fair, etc. I gotta get half the kappa. It's like, you mean you have to have to play the game? Holy shit, what a fucking terrible idea. Sounds awful. Uninstall it. Never play again. So, if you don't want to play the game, what are, you, what are you doing anyway? So, those are just things that I would like if my frame rate didn't suck dick. But as it is right now, I can't stand PvPing because even with a supercomputer, I just can't get good frame rate. 60 frame rate is not good enough these days. 80 frame rate is not good enough. 100 frame rate is not good enough. It wasn't good enough 10 years ago. Why would it be good enough today? So, that, my friends, is my review of Tarkov. You probably won't see any other Tarkov videos from me. Haven't been streaming it. Been mostly just doing real life stuff right now, working hard. But uh, yeah, hopefully that was enjoyable for you and hopefully it was informative and uh, I hope I touched all my points and I didn't miss anything because I'm not going to do it again. That's it. One take, man. That's how I do it. So uh, yeah, if you want to contact me, I'm real easy to contact artemisknives at gmail.com. If you want to talk to me, Nikita, I'll tell you where I work right now. Shit's pretty dope, but I'm economy lead, so, uh, and we, we actually have over a million players online, so pretty crazy. 
Um, but yeah, I, it doesn't mean I still don't have a huge passion for item collection games. I mean, I still do item collecting. It's just in a different environment these days. So, uh, but yeah, I think what you guys have is really unique, and I'm sure that you guys have an awesome Favreau board or whatever you use to uh, organize all your thoughts. But uh, I see great things for Tarkov. Tarkov's already done incredible. You guys have stuck true to the vision in a, in a cesspool of just trash games. Trash, half-assed, unfinished shit. People pulling the rug on everything. And uh, Tarkov stayed true, so I look forward to seeing what Tarkov does over the years to come and what vision. Hopefully they're not too burnt out working on it. It is really fun. I just wish that the game didn't run like dog shit. So, that's it. Check it out. I got a broom in the background right here. Whoop, right here. Doing a little cleaning today. So, that's all. I'll see you guys. Signing out as uh, Artemis. 300 million bucks in Tarkov. Casual gamer. So, uh, yeah. But I highly recommend it. If you haven't played Tarkov, Tarkov is great, and they never put microtransactions in the game. That's one of the reasons their economy is so badass. The game would all be ruined if that was the case, if they, had, if they sold any of that garbage. So, it's, it's really stayed true, and that's what makes it awesome. So, I hope that they can address some of the things, even just a couple of the things that I've touched on in this video. That would just be great. But really, if I could just get double the frame rate with my fucking expensive computer, I'm sure that other players would enjoy it a lot more as well. It's really tough to play the game with bad frame rate. Really tough to enjoy it. So, that's Tarkov. Who knows when I'll return. Goodbye.